Just a warning, the video probably contains an unhealthy amount of thought crimes, but it's still approved by the Ministry of Truth. Hell yeah. The bots Under a code of freedom and liberty and justice and, and coming together and working together and being strong. Everybody is a bot. The only good bot is dead. Let me tell you something. I'm from Buenos Aires. I say kill them all. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why the enemies of humanity hate us so much, because we love God. And I am a human supremacist. What? I am a human supremacist. 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 The bots! The bots! That term will be the future war with the robots and the AI. What you're hearing now is the entire future and everything they tried to stop us from doing. I'm a bot. I'm a bot. I don't know anything. It's the stupid for me. Our supremacy will not end with this planet. We will keep all the stars. We will colonize. We will green dead worlds. We will go interdimensional. We will unlock the secrets of the universe. God has laid them out like Christmas presents for his children. Kept you waiting for real content, huh? So we bring it close to the yearly April gimmick month by finally talking in depth about what is considered to be my autistic hyperfixation of the year. I can say I'm well ahead of the curve at this point, but I am now up doing a proper review of Helldivers 2 after probably spending an ungodly amount of playtime hours at this game. And after everyone and their mom has said their shitty fucking opinion on Helldivers 2. <laughs> Yes, but Jamie, hey, you said you were saving money hardcore. Why the hell did you waste 40 bucks on this game? Well, Jim, because this game is well worth the investment. Because considering the current state of the gaming industry as a whole, this game feels as much of an anomaly in the industry, just as much as a landing a 500 kilogram bomb somewhere without team killing is an anomaly in the tactics of this game. Or just as much as Baldur's Gate 3. Tonight, I shall drink every drop of your blood. <laughs> and I mean that because the freaking game is fun as hell to play, as well as carefully crafted passion project for our game made possible somehow by PlayStation Studios. Normally, a AAA live service third person horror co op shooter like this will make you go like, eh. I can easily pass on this. I mean, I already passed on the Suicide Squad game because Warner Brothers is a slimy bunch of executive cretins like Zaslav. So I can pass on this PlayStation Studios AAA production developer by Arrowhead. If you do actually think like that, though, you'd be clearly mistaken because the game manages to perfectly do the simple shit to perfection and it will make it fun to play and not just watch your favorite streamer play it. So yes, I know plenty of people have said this already, but Helldivers 2 managed to pull off the Starship Troopers gimmick better than the actual Starship Troopers games, and I'm not exaggerating, this game is a complete blast. This game felt like the second coming of Team Fortress 2 for me, the one before all the hat shit and all the bots bullshit, and games like this or Pizza Tower can easily sell me on the meme potential these games have, but actually? Pizza Tower ain't got shit on Helldivers 2 because Pizza Tower isn't made for normies like me who are into speedrunning Wario Land. And I ain't got fingers for all that. And even TF2 depressing feeling seal can't compare. Both please fix the bots problem in TF2, I swear to god. So what's the game all about, you say? You are the Helldivers, a faction of elite, prestigious and hardcore men, women and children over the age of seven. The army. It's everything you like who are sent in a military campaign on two fronts in the galaxy around Super Earth, which is a home planet to you and your beloved democracy. But you'll see eventually, however, that earning your freedom is hard work by itself. No! You soon realize that a war on two fronts, both with not just determined instincts, but also with robot automatons, is probably gonna kick Super Earth's ass. 
So you're on the task of saving managed democracy and spreading liberty and freedom all across multiple planets in the galaxy like Potionist's Golden Days. And this game doesn't really cut short of satirizing the usual militaristic fascism that permeates the imperialist USA. Even then, if it kinda ironically sells military propaganda pretty well. So much so that I want to just quadruple the fucking defense budgets. And yeah, it pretty much follows in the steps of Starship Troopers, the movie, and not the book, because if we're talking about the book, I'm going to go on a tangent about how some dim witted brains should stop typing words on a word document before it's too late. And then PewDiePie beat the shit out of s to me, and the West was saved, wrote some dim witted buffoon. But the game itself is pretty much like that, and it's working like genius, especially considering I've been japping to my IRL friends non-stop about the game like it was a real wartime scenario I was really in. Especially considering... The Creek. It's a fantastically made game in terms of that it actually feels like a huge scale war campaign that you actually get immersed in, despite not being 100% realistic because, well, it's still sci-fi shit because every single detail of the gameplay is so carefully handcrafted in a way where all those 400,000 players playing the game make that the story of the game by themselves. All thanks to the ever-loving omnipotent entity at Arrowhead known as Joel. No, not that Joel, this Joel. The guy who manages the entire fate of the war campaign at Helldivers 2 like he was a game master in Dungeons and Dragons. Fate of Supero is decided by possibly a Swedish guy with a magnificent beard. Again, it's mainly a co-op shooter horror game where you either team up with exactly three of your friends to spread democracy like it was a goddamn go for, or you go by yourself with some randoms who suspiciously break into the mix too much. I swear to God, some people cannot avoid having the PlayStation mic always on. Please, for the love of Bin Laden, stop it, you cretin. But either way, you will have fun dropping airstrikes because, regardless of succeeding or failing missions, or regardless of how expendable you are in this game, you still have a good time making everyone else feel as expendable as you are. Want a break from the ads? <laughs> in fact, the game answers the wise old question of. What if four idiots had access to EMP airstrikes with a single key sequence? The hilarity of the situations you can build in a game out of sheer stupidity itself is what contributes to the 50% of the satire of the game itself, and it's genius. The other 50% is just Joel scheming to fool you into thinking you beat the automatons when in fact you just collectively play the tutorial of the game. On the left front, you got the Socialist Automatons, which are obviously testing if you can easily be triggered into a Vietnam tier PTSD every time. The Automatons have the thickest armor in the game. They got longer range attacks, big ass tanks, chainsaw robots that chase you like Funky Man and Sirius Sam, and of course, a plentiful of bar dropships and lots and lots of gunships. At some point I might start coming from literally everywhere, even to the point that the trees can start talking Python code, especially considering one particular planet we had to fight automatons on. Malevolent Creek, or as a SAS fellow honor veterans say, Space Vietnam, where the goddamn chat GPT power monsters basically appear out of nowhere every time in dense jungles with red all over. Like our boomer grandparents left actual Vietnam, our generation left Malevolent Peak as a story I'm going to inevitably tell my nephews about in my rocking chair. We fought the damn bunch in the middle of the jungle planet. It was a goddamn massacre. On Xbox or PlayStation, Grandma. On PC, you fucking moron. By the time I'm writing this, we already beat Malevolent Creek, and we beat once the automaton menace, wiping it out once from the galaxy. Only to meet one slight, one slight issue of having them return in a Shyamalan type twist, where they now invade of another corner of the galaxy in greater numbers, in a sort of galactic comedy what we call a war. All that celebration was basically for nothing. I mean, we're basically the with socialist robots, which might honestly work for the Spanish Socialist Party. Ha <laughs> ha, we have been pursued. I mean, geez, we lost Vietnam. We lost Afghanistan, we surely fucking lost the Western civilization, so I ain't listening to this bunch of wanton zero spewing barrel sunset sycophants. We cannot afford it yet another malevolent creek, guys, and things ain't looking good in the front of the GPT-4 powered clankers. On the right front of the war, we got a terminate population problem. 
And this is a Starship Troopers part of Helldivers 2 where we fight hordes and hordes of bugs. There's even a planet suspiciously named Glendato for Jim Flint's sake. Small box, big box, box of all types and sizes, even box that somehow still back you at night. Why you ask? Well, not to really dive to keep pumping out oil. Oh, I'm sorry. E710. Just stay an allegory for oil spelled backwards and upside down. But because these goddamn insects keep popping up and are threatening our democracy. And that can be good. What's worse is, I don't know how they can pop up on more planets. I don't see them traveling through space, nor actually having a plan, but whatever. I shouldn't just worry about that. I don't think someone is putting those in those planets out of nowhere. That's absurd. That's terminate dissident propaganda that the Ministry of Truth warned me about. I can trust the Ministry of Truth on that. Don't fool me with that socialist automaton propaganda shit. What do you think? That I was recruited yesterday? Well, actually, I'm technically recruited yesterday to drop on this unknown planet full of tin cans. But still, you think I'm that stupid? Well, Technically, yeah, I'm stupid because I keep diving into my friend's orbital barrage by accident. But still, you will be executed for treason at 6 on net all channels. Will you like to know more? Of course you don't. So stop diving at communist undemocratic garbage. Trust the Ministry of Truth and your fellow democracy officer. Speaking of which, thanks to the Ministry of Truth itself, I can inform you on their behalf that you can contribute to our war efforts by pledging $5 a month in actual war bonds at becomeagoon.today. If you don't manage to skip the section of the video, well, first of all, good on you. But second, you should know that it helps financially bankroll these videos in hopes we can make better, funnier, and smarter content than before. All in the while, you got access to exclusive content that will obviously be approved by the Ministry of Truth itself. So if you can afford it, go to becomeagoon.today and pledge $5 a month to the cause. For democracy! I don't know, what else to say? Ah, yeah. Uh, the game is pretty fun. In order to fight off either the filthy bots or bugs, get a wide assortment of weapons and tools at your disposal. I'll thanks to your supply super destroyer that was assigned to everyone, and I decided to call Spear of Destiny. <laughs> yeah, very original name for a Wolfenstein title. If only I had a penny for every person who named their destroyer Wings of Redemption. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. Thanks to the huge capabilities of your super destroyer, however, you can invoke a series of airstrikes with this DDR tier arrow code commands which can let you deliver freedom in explosive quantity. And the best part? Doesn't really matter if you hit your friends with those. They are as expendable as you are. You can reinforce your expendable friends with similar key code to bring them back to battle. Granted, you don't really want to spend your reinforcements because if Malevolent Creek saw it as something, is that there's such a thing such as a bad spending of human capital in our defense budget. Oh, and you have to throw the beacon that summons the airstrikes so you can stick it to a bug or one of your teammates or even drop it by accident, which ensures that the comedy of the game just writes itself. All you have to do is complete a wide diverse range of missions such as destroying illegal broadcast, escorting civilians with what seems to be a reverse Blues TD game with friendly fire. Or my personal favorite, launching an ICBM nuke on the same planet. We did it, Patrick! We saved Hellmire! Instead of that, you get to enjoy some gorgeous scenery in a wide variety of planet types, such as a fire tornado planet, a level of creek but purple, or a planet that closely resembles being on a Malia border. My recommendation once you get there is to play at the hardest difficulty possible for maximum hilarity. Even if you are sure you will not make it successfully out of a mission, or extract safely, such as a hell dive difficulty, where it can truly test your complete and utter stupidity like in a good slapstick film. The difficulty setting is like basically you'll be maxing Sunder while setting your feet on fire. Definitely you'll get in and out with the same presumption that you're not going to make it. Like you constantly miss on that last hidden gacket even in a goddamn closet, you'll probably barely survive all four of you extracting from the mission. Or that trying. Especially considering the game is janky as hell. No, seriously, many like me like have encountered many, many bugs in this game. 
<laughs> Aside from the actual insects you shoot at, even game-breaking ones where it just amplifies the absurdity of it all. Because apparently the game engine held up as two rounds on is a very old, ancient even. Ah, yes, I think the skull had a bad case of the Skyrim. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, Helldivers, we made the Quasar Cannon so accurate and powerful that it causes a principal overflow. But eventually, through the power of friendship, democracy, and naval arms strikes, you'll definitely have a good time, just like I had. Look, if I had to describe every single detail about how the game is so great, I'll be here forever, and I ain't got time for that. The developers of Arrowhead keep adding stuff on top of stuff, a lot of which I don't have the time to cover. Hell, they added a TF2 demo line cosplay costume into the game. <laughs> so basically, just play yourself. Do yourself a favor and enjoy while you can. But please, do so without actually rooting for the fascistic views of the main guys. Yes, this is a point where I have to give you an already told lesson about media literacy. As I've already been told millions of times before me on this godforsaken platform called YouTube.com. But just know this, just because we're the main guys, doesn't mean we're the good guys. Hell, if you deep dive into Helldivers 1 and 2 lore like I think I did, you know that I find we're the bad guys even, and by just committing similar atrocities as that of the CIA and even some authoritarian regimes. It's pretty evident that the galactic war mess that we got ourselves into is pretty much our fault alone. Oh no! Were we misled? Just all the devs are in a bunch of Nazi lobbying assholes! Okay, first and most obvious, grow the fuck up. I know you probably have the mental age of 12 when you get off by triggering the lips by posting obvious pics of Soy Jack like the majority of the comments we get on this channel lately, but honestly, if you can read the obvious signs of satire this game has, I just think this is a political game. It's just about being cool, killing bugs. Go touch grass and enjoy life like a normal person. You obviously deserve it, unlike us who have to do the actual mental busy work. You just got triggered because you got banned off to the Helldivers Discord server for annoying the mods by constantly spamming Rachel's slurs. Like, my brother in Christ, it might be funny to you, but it's not funny. In general, for anyone with at least two base neurons in a gray matter. Stop thinking like all I'm yapping is a bunch of socialist automaton propaganda. It's just common sense. So, to wrap up this video, and in an April Fool's gimmick month, I will close with the wise words of Sirius Sam Stone. Oh god, never underestimate the power of stupid things in large numbers. Service guarantees dental plans. Would you like to know more? Then subscribe and destroy the like button with that 500 kilogram bomb of a click. And I will see you uh, like later after I go through my execution for treason. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest.